staying fit is important, and I thought it would be fun to make a bot that reminds me and my friends to stay active. So today I'm going to walk you through a step-by-step -step process to create a Discord bot in Python that reminds us to do push-ups and highlight all sorts of cool tricks you can do with a Discord bot along the way. Discord bots are great for maximizing the productivity of users as well as the servers they reside in. And thanks to Discord's developer team, bots are capable of fetching data, sending notifications, scheduling events, moderating conversations, playing games, and so much more. Obviously, a push-up reminder bot is a silly example, but through this build, you'll have enough information to explore many other ways to use Python's Discord library. So let's get down to business. First, we'll go over the prerequisites for this day one build. Next, we'll create a Discord application through the Discord developer portal, request API keys, and begin initializing our own Discord bot. Once the placeholder bot has been created, we'll invite it to a server otherwise known as a guild. From there, we'll use Python and the Discord library to make the bot do the things we want it to do. We'll go over some use cases and cool methods first, and then we'll show you how you can integrate this into a push-up reminder. Let's get to building. You'll need a Discord account to enter the developer portal, so make sure to create one if you don't yet have it. The registration link is in the description below. Also, I recommend downloading Discord's desktop client. That link is also in the description below. We'll also need to have installed the Discord library for Python, so we'll open the command prompt and type pip install discord to install the discord library. In order to make our push-up bot, we need to make a discord application. We do this by entering discord's developer portal through the web. Once we're logged in, create a new application by clicking the new application button. We'll call it push-up application. Now we have an application. This is essentially a manager that allows us to access a bearer token for the discord account we're logged into. Using the tokens, we can communicate with guilds that are associated with this account, but we'll need a bot to do that first. Click on the Bot tab on the left-hand side and press the Add Bot button under the Build a Bot section. Adding a bot gives our application visible life in Discord, which means users in a server can see and interact with the bot. However, this action is irrevocable, so choose wisely. A wild bot has appeared. The bot comes with a username, an icon, and it's a unique token that will come into play later. Let's change its username so that everyone in a given server knows that this is a bot. Let's also make sure to save our changes. A bot isn't really useful if it can't communicate with anyone, so let's invite it to our Discord server or what they call a guild. It's easy to create a guild if you don't already have one, so let's do that now. On the left side of the Discord desktop client, there's a plus sign that lets us add more servers to our dashboard. We create a server by clicking Create a Server. Let's make the server name Kite Fitness. Now, we need to add our bot to the server. We can invite the bot directly through this invitation screen, so we'll need to go back to the developer portal. I also don't need to be in a Discord channel at the moment, so I'll skip that for now. To add our bot to the Kite Fitness server, open the OAuth2 tab above the Bot tab. This is where we specify that we want to add a bot to a channel. And we can do that by selecting the Bot checkbox under the Scope section. This creates an authorization link and another set of checkboxes that specify the permissions we want to give the bot. First we'll set the permissions, then we'll use the link to invite the bot to Kite Fitness. There are a variety of permissions for bots, and they're categorized into general permissions, text permissions, and voice permissions. I'm going to check the administrator box, which gives the bot all the permissions. Note that the authorization link changed to reflect this section. However, I'd like to stress that you should be very careful when assigning permissions to a bot. For the toy example here, it's okay to assign the bot as an administrator, but in real world situations, we might want to be a little bit more cautious. Note again that the link above changed the code for permissions from a zero to an eight, making an authorization link to make our bot an administrator. We're gonna copy this link into a new tab, and all we gotta do is select the server we want our bot to join. We confirm that we want the bot to be an administrator and hit authorize. Now, for the hardest part. We must prove we're not a bot ourselves. Hooray, now the bot is authorized and part of the guild. We can begin coding a script to control it. But before we get into the code, I wanted to take a few seconds to talk about Kite's AI autocomplete, which I'm using in this video. Whether you're new to Python or already a pro, you should try out Kite as your autocomplete to reduce your keystrokes and save time programming. 
Kite is a free plugin for your code editor that uses machine learning to save you keystrokes while you're programming. So if you're using Atom, VS Code, Spider, PyCharm, Sublime, or Vim, Kite will seamlessly integrate into your coding workflow. Kite can complete entire lines of code, and it has a feature called Intelligent Snippets that will help you fill in arguments and method calls with variables defined earlier in your script. The window on the right side of my screen here is also a Kite feature called the Kite Copilot. It automatically shows you relevant Python documentation while you type based on your cursor location. This saves you time from having to Google search for docs. The best part of Kite is that it's free and you can download it from the link in the description below. All right, let's open our Python script and get cracking. For our push-up bot, we'll implement a number of functionalities to show how the Discord library works. We'll have the bot welcome new users to the guild, respond to messages containing keywords about working out, and randomly select online users to instruct to do some push-ups on an hourly basis. In addition to Discord, the main library we need is async.io, which we use to make concurrent repeated events. I will also be using OS, random, and date time. Now let's initialize a bot and declare the desired functions as events. Now let's initialize a bot and declare the desired functions as events. This is done by using the decorator named at bot.event and it allows our bot to define new methods below to use when certain events occur. Let's have one event for when a member enters the guild and an event for when a member sends a message with any fitness keywords and also an event to talk to guild members on a timer. As mentioned previously, we need our bot's functions to be concurrent, which means multiple events can be handled at the same time due to the use of multiple threads. For this, we need to use the async await syntax of the async IO library. Let's assign the async keyword to each of our functions so that they are running concurrently. We also need to control how each method yields values, which is done through the await keyword. Using the await keyword tells our bot that if there is some other work to do while yielding this value, then it should go ahead and do that while waiting for the value to be returned. Now let's get to writing our functions. For the most part, these three functions consist of analyzing data, retrieving the channel we want to speak in, generating a response, and sending it back to the channel. Let's start by welcoming users to the server when they join. First, we check that the member's ID number is not the same as the bot's. Then, we get an instance of the general text channel using Discord's get method. Once we have that, we create an f string as a personalized welcome message and send it to the channel using await. Pretty easy, right? Now let's work on sending messages based on certain keywords. Similar to the last method, we check that the author of the message isn't a bot. Once that's clear, we create our list of fitness keywords and get another instance of the channel. Now we check the messages to see whether they contain any of the keywords in our list. Note that this is case sensitive here. The keywords in our messages and in our list must have the same case to catch every instance of the keyword. When there's a match, reference the keyword in an f string response and send it to the channel. Let's use carrots to tag a user by their ID. Finally, let's review our push up reminder method. Since this is going to be a timed event, we need a while loop and a function that sleeps for a minute. We also need to check the state of the bot and ensure that it's ready to send a message. For each member in the guild, we need to ensure they're online and they're not the bot. If that checks out, we add them to a list of online members. Before we proceed, we need to make sure our list isn't empty, which we can do by checking the size of the list. Then we randomly pick a user, get an instance of the channel, and create a message using the current time. Once the message is ready, we're going to send it to the channel, but don't forget to make the bot sleep afterwards. We'll also need to assign this function to a loop, and we can do so by using the bot create task function. The last step is to call the run function to start the bot. This function takes the bot's authorization token as its only parameter. You can find this in the bot tab on the Discord developer portal under the token heading. Click copy to get the key and pass it into the function. As a best practice, I use the OS library to retrieve my Discord token from the environment variables so it isn't publicly displayed in the video. All right, let's take our Discord bot for a spin. Now you should be able to create a Discord bot for your own guild and customize it to do whatever you want. The potential for these bots is pretty limitless. From making text games like Zork to moderating a channel, the possibilities are pretty endless. 
Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel as we'll have more one day builds coming your way. And finally, don't forget to check out the Kite AI Autocomplete plugin. It's free and the link's in the description below.